day one, the very first bill that was released publicly. I love that. You just get into a ship and that you fly away and that you go away and that you can just go to this infinite universe. Hi everyone, welcome to Voidcast. Um, I am your host, Void Zero, or Zero, or Entity, or whatever you want to call me. We'll figure it out going forward. Um, today is our first Voidcast, our first official large Voidcast. Um, it'll be available both on YouTube and a podcast service yet to come, as well as there'll be a section of the VoidZeroMedia.com site, which will house the podcast, a new section of the site. So please look forward to that. And in the meantime, let's get started with our topics for today. So one of the first things I'd like to talk about today is Subnautica Below Zero. So I'm a big fan, I was a big fan of the original Subnautica. It was recommended to be by one of my friends and after playing it for a while, I was like completely in love with the game. It had a lot of performance issues though, the very first version. I played, I think the very first, not the very first build, I think it was like maybe somewhere in the middle because the final story hadn't been ratified. And when the full game of the original Subnautica came out, I decided to... I, I cheated then. You know, I used the console to teleport me to the places. I mean, I had already played most of the game, so I knew what was coming, for lack of a better word. I had played a lot of the gameplay loop, It, and I just wanted to finish the story. For Below Zero, however, I decided I wanted to go in blind, and I did not play the game at all. At no point during its um, early access development did I look at videos, did I look at stories, did I look at photos. I even ignored Unknown Will's entire blog and everything. I just really wanted to go in blind. So a couple weeks ago, I think at this point, I'm not entirely sure, the game, the full game was released. The final release day bill was released and it it's pretty good. I have been playing non-stop basically every chance that I got and I really do think that Below Zero is a fantastic expansion because even though it's billed as a separate new game with a separate new story, um, from thus far what I've seen it already has callbacks to the original Subnautica and the story is leaning where might be some additional connections like I haven't gotten through enough of the story uh, and I haven't really been able to like read it through or analyze it in order to figure out what it is, what is the connections and again I've been avoiding all of the Thierry channels and all of the Subnautica main channels because again I don't want to, to see any spoilers yet and for the most part I am really looking forward to like discovering the new tech and whatnot. like this C truck is it's pretty good um, it is, I think it's a lot more, is a lot more, is a lot more flexible than the Cyclops. The Cyclops was just a big, huge thing, but the original Subnautica had a much bigger map where the Cyclops was able to like run around. Now this one is a lot smaller, like it, the game feels a lot smaller, even just like going through the map and whatnot. I like, you could always feel slightly claustrophobic, but it, does, it makes up in depth of the entire map. There's a lot more, I think it goes up down to I think like 1500 meters down. Well, in game terms. Um, it So far, it I have only gotten down to anything like maybe 750 or 1000, somewhere there. Between those two values, um, there's a lot more to explore. The review for this game, I actually might do it without seeing the end. Although I think like I am at the point of the game, I think almost 10 hours in. Well, it's not really 10 hours. I had to like restart the game a couple of times because I made some dumb decisions and I died and lost a lot of stuff. And I was like, mm, I'm not doing that. I'm not redoing it. I'm not going back to find the sea truck. So I just reloaded my save. Uh, I lost a lot of progress there, but it's better than having to rebuild the sea truck. And I think that's like one of my problems with Subnautica in general, both Below Zero and the previous one. Like in between the story points, in between the exploration, and don't get me wrong, the exploration is absolutely stunning and fantastic all around. There is absolutely nothing I love better than just sitting in the sea truck or sitting in the cyclops and just 
driving through the um, environments. The environments are stunning. Every single one, the lily pad islands, the Arctic, the Arctic forest, the kelp, the even the above ground um, one, which is below zero's claim to fame. It has a lot of islands, I think like two or three islands, as well as like more research posts. Um, it does not give me the sense of wonder that the very original um, Subnautica gave me. In the original Subnautica, you would climb to a point with an, with an observatory and that observatory would oversee the entire water world and, well, the crater that you were in, spoilers for those who haven't seen or heard it, Subnautica, it was, it had a sense of wonder and awe, like just watching out into the horizon. And this one doesn't have that. And I don't know if it's because of the weather and conditions, although, um, as I should point out, the weather and conditions is much, much better in this game. Like there's an active weather system, whether or not you're above well, when you're above ground, rather, there could be weather phenomena that will cause you to to lose status on your suit longer, I mean, at a quicker rate than previous. So far, I haven't been able to um, explore above ground as much as I would like. There is a lot of issues with me not being able to figure out what I need. And I've been forced to go through some of the Wikipedia pages, well, not Wikipedia, the fandom pages, so that I could figure out, and it just seems like there aren't as many options. I haven't really looked at it too hard, but it doesn't seem like there are many options for, like, above-ground upgrades, which, again, makes sense. The game takes place mostly underwater. But, yeah, like, I mean, there is the hover bike. I mean, I haven't gotten to the hover bike yet. I don't know where the hover bike is. Um... Like, I tried getting to one of the stations, and I keep getting lost. And then, that's another problem with the weather system, is if the weather system, uh, if you're exploring above ground and the weather system hits, or if night falls, you, at least personally for me, I lose my bearings completely, and I'm unable to figure out where to go, or when to go, or why to go. So, I guess those are my initial, well, not initial thoughts, those are like a lot of thoughts, rather. I am... Um, I'm still playing through the game. There is still a review to come out. Good chance that if you're watching this, it will be out soon. Maybe. I might not finish the game. Because oh, one thing about Subnautica is that once you've played about 10, you have pretty much have everything. Uh, you know, you've pretty much explored everything. And it's just to get to the, to the story points. So I might just do that. But at, as I said, I am close to about 10 hours in so I am trying to like, play out the next 5 or 6 hours see how far I can get and I might end up just teleporting because there's a lot going on and I the game is fun and I, I have enjoyed the last 10 hours and I'll probably enjoy the base building aspects more I like you know as I, I say this for this um, void cast I realize that there's a lot to be said about this game and I don't and I need to remember all of these things when I write the review. Um, although it, it wouldn't be a review as much as it would be a full list of all my thoughts on this game. So yeah, um, f- that is that is what I think of Subnautica Below Zero for now. Um, there's a lot of other stuff I'd like to talk about, but I think there's like a minor gripes. Overall, for me, I feel like Subnautica Below Zero has hit the mark and it is so far very enjoyable. And I am looking forward to, I guess, as I said, I've close to probably halfway through the game. So I'll probably be taking next week or two to like internalize it, figure it out. And the review would probably be up sometime soon. You might be seeing it. It might already be here if you're watching this at a later date. Yeah, so that's Subnautica Below Zero. And this week's podcast is brought to you by VoidZeroMedia.com. On VoidZeroMedia.com is where I host all of my writings, all of my blogs, all the transcripts for us, as well as this podcast, which will be included in a new section. The Void Calls, Will You Answer? Please go to the site and put in your email. That's the way you can answer the Void's call. And the second game uh, we'll, I'd like to discuss this week is No Man's Sky's Expedition. Now, Expedition came out 
a couple of months ago. I actually didn't bother. I got it, but I didn't bother to play Expeditions. I really do like, like, uh, okay, let, me, let me just speak about the up the Expeditions update before I get to the additional new update. Is this new absolutely stunning badge system? Like these badges that you get, the milestones that you get for milestones, they are stunning. They are like, like I get such 1950s, 1960s old sci-fi cartoon comic vibe from it. It's is absolutely stunning. Like I cannot express to you how good these patches. That's the um. That's the word that they used for it. That these patches are fantastic. I cannot. I want to play the game just so I could get it. But at the same time, I want somebody to just dump these images online so that I could just have them. Like I am this close to legitimately just going and printing it out and walking around with it. Like they are. I I cannot describe how fantastic I think these are. And yeah, you know, this was the, oh, it was last month that it was released. This update brought a lot of integration, a lot of additional events. And like, just like the game keeps getting prettier though. Like, sure, some of the um, planets are bland and boring. I will give you that. But when you really find a pretty planet, it is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, these um, ship models are fantastic as well. I, ongoing expeditions, like everything just... New Man's Sky keeps getting better every time um, there's an update. I absolutely adore it. Um, I don't really care about the combat system. I don't really care about some of the um, the features that the game adds to the system. I just really like how, like I, I knew that when my when I was originally writing a review of No Man's Sky. Well, it wasn't really a review. It was more like a think piece where I assessed like the reason why people didn't like it and why I personally liked it. Like even day one, the very first build that was released publicly, I loved that. I loved that version of the game. That version of the game, like, you know, it was, you just get into a, a ship and that you fly away and that you go away and that you could just go to this infinite universe of absolutely nothing and you could just exist. And I know that a lot of people who play games for the gamer aesthetic, they didn't really enjoy that. They didn't enjoy the emptiness and the loneliness that was the original No Man's Sky. And I feel like I need to write a piece one day where I can really explain what it meant, what that original empty, lonely experience meant. And I don't know if that was Hello Games initial um, if that was their intention or if they just tried to spin it like that but for me i while technically yes the later versions were technically better both from a performance standpoint and from a gameplay standpoint i think that very initial build was something that honestly i will continue to praise because it is just that emptiness that loneliness that there is it was such a haunting experience that was brilliant that I personally feel was something that I don't think a lot of people cared for or appreciated. And I don't know if that was because it had such a massive launch and it was then massively panned. But again, the original one, not for everybody. And it was, but for me personally, I enjoyed it. And I feel like there was something there that a lot of people didn't get and I got out of it. And I might have been the only person to have gotten that out of it. But that's okay, because the game has since been redeemed. Everybody has since gotten what they wanted from the game. And I, on day one, got what I wanted from that game. Now, on to the actual update, the most recent update, where the Mass Effect ship is now in a No Man's Sky edition. Um, a mission, sorry. The Normandy. Now, I've played Mass Effect before, and I am... I'll probably try to get the Legendary Edition, but I am a little sparse on money, so I can't buy every single game that I want. I currently have money earmarked for um, the Pokemon Snap and two the Famicom Detective Series games. I really, really want to play those. Um, I really want to write something on that as well. I feel like that was one of the original um, VNs 
on the Super Nintendo and it was a pretty on the Famicom and it was a pretty big deal and it helped lay the foundation for games such as Ace Attorney and whatnot. So I I really I, I didn't really watch anything. Actually I lied, I think I watched one video for IGN. Anyways, I will um I'll get to that after. So this particular No Man's Sky update the expedition 2 update apparently that's where you'll be getting the well the beachhead yeah the expedition 2 update beachhead update is where you're gonna get the the normandy from mass effect i mean this is just like a, a collaboration between the two series um and mass effect certainly needs all the help it can get after andromeda although to be fair i played the most recent update of andromeda using the EA Pass, EA Play, whatever you call that, and it so far is good. I find the game a little bit. It started off a bit boring. Um, I would like to play more of it, but I feel like I don't care at this point. Anyways, so yeah, um, that was No Man's Sky. I didn't really play um, the last update, but I feel like I might want to jump in just to see this. Again, I'm not entirely sure. But I guess I'll see, because I will be playing, I, I'm waiting for the next major update for No Man's Sky. Um, because every time Sean Murray was like, oh, we are done, we're moving on. He just drops another update, and I'm like, what the hell? So, yeah, that's that's No Man's Sky. Now, typically, um, at this point, I would like to have a game tree, like something, uh, not a piece of random game news or anything happened this week that would have been cool. But I don't care at this point, I didn't... Um, I didn't really search for anything because I do want to talk about my Nintendo Switch for this moment because since I've been playing the Subnautica Below Zero, I have not been playing my Switch. Um, I'm currently trying to beat out Zelda Breath of the Wild because um, my cousin bought it for me for Christmas last year and well, I wanted to play Hyrule Warriors, Calam Hyrule of Calamity, well, that game. Um, the Calamity one that is just basically a Warriors game but reskinned yeah anyways so I played out that because I thought when they said it was a prequel it would actually have prequel elements I don't see that I didn't see that especially now that I'm playing Breath of the Wild so that's a little bit disappointing I but I am really enjoying Breath of the Wild and Breath of the Wild again is fantastic and I, I honestly understand now why it was such a big deal when it came out fantastic everything about it is fantastic and i'm i'm never going to write a review of this game uh, i think this game is one of those games that is just so big and so large that there isn't really there isn't much that you can say that hasn't already been said at least for me personally i feel like the game the game was re fantastic and excellently built designed almost every single system has been was taught out um I, I honestly i don't know how they're going to carry forward breath of the wild 2 i don't know if we're gonna it's gonna end up being like that a zelda 2 from like 1980 whatever when we had a fantastic original legend of zelda and then we came and we ended up with whatever that was so yeah i so i've been playing i had been playing breath of the wild before below zero and you know, because of what's going on right now, I couldn't actually get my physical release of Pokemon Snap. Which, given what's going on right now, it's not big of it's not a big deal. I just I am trying to get a digital version or at least find somebody who can buy me the the digital card, um, the eShop card, because I can't use my well, my father's credit card at this point because I have because I never went and registered for mine. And no, I can't. Yeah, so I currently have Pokemon Snap to buy as well as the Famicom, the Famicom Detective Club games. So these are two really old games that was originally came out, I think, for the Super Nintendo or for that era of console slash systems. And it was modernized like really, really well. I think this is one of those games where the remaster is really going to do it justice. Uh, I guess this is actually a completely redo. Um, I don't even think you could call this a remaster, it's just straight up better than the last. Yeah, so um, I wanted to originally buy it as a pre-order so I could get like $15 off or something. But again, 
circumstances prevented that. So I am going to end up paying $70. Wow. 70 US dollars. 70 US dollars. Anyway. Point is, I am very interested in Famicom Detective Club. I It served as a basis for the Easter egg. Well, not basis, but it introduced a lot of things that would become staples in this style of games going forward. And I... I didn't really do that much research on the game itself. I would like, I would have liked to. Um, well, I'm, I'm not going to do any research right now. I may consider doing a review of this or at the very least, you know, just a, a write up because I feel like this game has a lot to offer and I really want to sit and play it through and internalize it. I, well, okay, I keep using the word internalize. I don't mean internalize like that. Like, I just want to really absorb it and like experience it. Um, and then I'll put my, my thoughts for it. I don't like to like, to like just scribble along some thoughts so yeah so that's my plan for that was my, my my game tree section so so that is pokemon snap and the famicom detective club series i there's a lot more that i want to talk about there but again i haven't really played it i i have yet to buy it um but it is on my wish list so hopefully probably within a month maybe i'll get it but for this week that's all that this is Again, thank you all very much for listening and for coming through. And I hope that you, you all got something from this. Feel free to let me know. Um, you can uh, you can visit the website, voidzeromedia.com. You can go to our YouTube channel, Void Zero. And you can leave your comments there. I'm currently preparing a section of the site for the podcast. So hopefully you all can stay together for that. Um, stay with me for that. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a, have a good time day or night. Have a time, I guess. Have a time.